Hi guys, as you uh, all know, I'm on sabbatical and uh, just before I uh, went on sabbatical, one of the senior leaders at our church uh, said to me, you know, Etty, what are you going to, uh, how are you going to be spending your time on sabbatical? Um, at which point I listed uh, how many books I was going to read and all the places I was going to visit, how I was going to go to Sydney and how I was going to meet these people and, and all the things that I was going to do, do, do. And he uh, gave me a piece of advice that he'd been given uh, by his minister the first time he took a sabbatical, uh, which was remember on your sabbatical um, to take uh, some rest. Uh, well, my immediate thought was great. Um, don't exactly like sitting and doing nothing. It's just it's just not me. And um, I don't know how I'm going to do that. Someone else asked me what it was that I enjoyed doing with my time. Um, and I thought, I uh, work six days a week. Um, I spend uh, my days off uh, sleeping and resting um, physically. Uh, what a weird question. Why, what, why would I know the answer to that? What am I going to do with all this extra time? And um, well, just before uh, both those conversations had happened, actually, um, I decided that I did need to think about rest. I did need, did need to think about what I was going to do uh, for nearly four months out of uh, the office on on annual leave and then on, on sabbatical. And um, so I went along to uh, 10 of those websites uh, who were great. Um, and I uh, found this book that is produced uh, by the, the Good Book Company, who are also brilliant providers of Christian books. Uh, this is, if you can see there, this is The Art of Rest by Adam uh, Mabry, I think it's pronounced. Um, he's in America, so... I could be pronouncing it completely wrong. Anyway, I picked up this book mainly because when I searched in the website, it had rest in the title. Um, that was my intention behind it. I need to read something about rest at the beginning of my sabbatical. I think God's intention behind that was I need to teach Etty about sustaining rest and um, yeah, about knowing what it is to rest well rest isn't something we do because we're weak or we're not good enough or, or we just we can't keep going and if if we could we'd be somehow amazing christians you know god rests uh, god takes that day in creation that sabbath rest and and he creates us for a pattern of rest um and uh, yeah this book has been really helpful in that um i'll look at um a few uh, excerpts of it with you as well because it's just been so helpful um, and the first one comes really hot off the heels at the beginning of the book, and it's a, a definition for what Sabbath is. Um, and it says, it says this, very simply, Sabbath is a time of rest, holy to the Lord. It is time that is given to God to receive refreshment from God. Let's hear that again. Sabbath is a time of rest, holy to the Lord. It is time that is given to God to receive refreshment from God. Now, I found that uh, really helpful. I found that really challenging. Um, I think uh, when I think of rest, I think of uh, collapsing in a heap at uh, the end of a long day and having a snooze. Um, and it's interesting because in this book, Adam um, uh, Marby talks, talks about these things as well. He says, you know, why can't we stop? Why won't we stop? Um, he said his wife laughed at him when um, he went uh, to said he was writing uh, this book. And he talks about this experience of of when he's on a day off, uh, him and his wife, he says, so, honey, what, what would you like to do today? And how she loves to just chill. Um, and his predisposition is to make a list of all the things, a list of all the things. How do I relax? What do I do to relax? And I think that's uh, me. I'm the same. Um, the idea of four months with nothing when I was planning my sabbatical was terrifying. That sounds boring. It sounds anxiety inducing. It doesn't sound something I want to do. Uh, in fact, he says in his book, I don't do rest. I do do and I think that's uh, very much me and I think that's why um, I can overwork I can make work uh, my idol and why actually something like a sabbatical is so good at pulling me back at pulling back and saying stop think about what is your idols what are your idols pull that away actually it's an honour to serve God in what I do it's an honour to be in full-time ministry but 
that's not the be all and end all. God is the be all and end all. And um, yeah, as I, as I read these chapters, I thought this is so me. I am very like uh, this guy, Adam. And um, he comes up um, with this an analogy of, of, of an airport, of people going through an airport. So people heading off to their plane, um, rushing. You know, the people, uh, I've been that person uh, when a train from Newcastle down to Stansted once uh, was massively delayed, running through the airport, rushing and really scared I was going to miss um that plane and it's horrible you just keep going and going and going I remember my legs aching I remember being out of breath I remember thinking this is ridiculous them trying to get to a holiday and then the other people the people who turn up early who um get bits and bobs done who get there and get to the airport and find themselves a bar or a cafe or or a restaurant or the shops have a have a mosey around the shops and have that rest time to wait for their gate to be called. I've experienced both those things. Um, so last uh, November time, um, I was lucky enough to uh, head down to Bath uh, with a friend who was on her sabbatical at the time, and um, we got to the airport nice and early. We got sat down. We had a nice cup of tea. We had a nice a chat, and then we moseyed on down to our gate and got on our plane. Well, Adam talks about those two things as being how we can be with our eternal destination. The airport is life. The airport is where we currently are. And some of us are rushing and rushing and rushing and going and going and going and not stopping and being terrified. We're going to miss that plane. And others go and then they stop and they go and then they stop and they rest and they read that book in the lounge and they um, grab that cup of tea and they spend that time chatting to that friend. And life's the same. We can go and we can go and we can go. We can think if we don't stop, we'll miss out. If we don't stop, we'll miss out on God. If we don't stop, we'll miss out on that opportunity to share the gospel. We'll miss out on that promotion at work. We'll miss out on that relationship. Now, not all of these things are bad things. In fact, most of them aren't. They're good things to love and want to do. And in ministry, it's so easy to say, well, I need to get that video finished or I need to get that thing finished for Sunday. I need to get that sermon in for the team. I need to do all of these things and for me it can feel relentless I need to get this thing done for Sunday I need to get this thing done so that the service will go well so I can train this member of team so I can uh, meet up with that student so I can get that bible study done but that's not going to benefit my relationship with God is not going to benefit those I serve's relationship with God I need to rest. I need to not go, 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 go and collapse. I need patterns of healthy, godly sitting down and having that cup of tea in the airport. And this book has really challenged me on that. I think I thought, oh, I read this book. It will teach me how to sit on my bum for four months. But actually, I think maybe the beginning of my sabbatical wasn't the time to read it. And then maybe it was. I need to get these good patterns of rest in place. But I need that more than ever in everyday ministry. And it's not just saying sleep, although it is saying that's OK. And um, that's a big thing for me. Actually, on a Sunday, I need to sleep. I need to have a, a, a nap on a Sunday afternoon because um, as someone who's um, naturally a bit more introverted, I can't go, go, go and give, give, give and serve, serve, serve people without that nap on a Sunday afternoon. Otherwise, Sunday's just too hard for me. And so sleep, you need sleep. And it talks about that. And that's uh, something I love. I love sleep. Um, and I sometimes feel a bit guilty about having a lion. Um, but actually, that is good. That is a good way to rest. It talks about reading. You know, how can I regularly be spending time with the Lord? And that is a challenge for me in my quiet times. How often do our times with God become a tick box exercise or not done at all? It's been a real challenge for me that actually it's not about uh, arrow prayers, although they are good and good. God is there the whole time. 
But when do I really spend time listening to God and in his word? And praying. Like I said, it's great to be able to pray to God wherever we are. But it's also great to be able to spend time. He talks about time with his family. How if all they ever did was say, have you got lunchbox or, or have you got this PE kit and then send them off? They wouldn't have a relationship. But how he spends time with his family. Um, he calls them their special special time with his children and he spends one-to-one -one time with them where they talk and they discuss and they think about things that really matter to them. They develop and invest in each other. And how often do we quickly not do that with our relationship with God? And that was a real, real challenge uh, to me. And reflection and and doing things we like and eating and good things. These things are all good ways of resting. And how often do I just do the sleep and ignore the things I enjoy or ignore my relationship with God? They've been a real uh, challenge to me. And um, as much as it reminded me of the parody of that scary film from The Simpsons, there was a phrase that said this, all work and no rest makes Christians idiots. No TV and no beer make Homer something, something. Go crazy? Don't mind if I do! All work and no rest makes Christians idiots. Forgetful children who work like slaves, forgetting their father, they forget that he owns the world. They forget that he's going to inherit it. This is a book that I have, if you can see that there, poured over and found so much helpful in. I could never get that all into one video. And it's so practical and so personal because we all tick differently. We all rest differently. I love chatting with friends and uh, doing silly things like learning words to stupid YouTube videos or uh, silly dances with cat socks or or whatever it is we are creative beings and some of those things we do just to be enjoying our time enjoying our relationships with others people would look at and think um why uh they would look at and think what is she doing but actually those times and that investment in those friendships whether we're singing along to seagulls or watching that new program or whatever it is they give us time to invest in one another to find out how we're doing to ask those questions how are you doing with the lord how can i be praying for you how is your struggle with sexual sin how is your struggle with singleness? How is your marriage? Whatever it is, how is that going? And how can I be praying for that? Those are all parts of good and godly rest. In this book that I would highly recommend, um, I learned so much about my sin, my laziness, my investment in my own progression over my relationship with God. And... I hope and I pray that I will pick this book up. I won't just leave it where it was, but I will pick it up and I will bring those rhythms both into life on sabbatical, but also into life full time again in work again. Let me uh, pray now um, as I uh, bring this video to a close. Father God, I thank you that you use books and authors and, and your word and so many things to correct and rebuke us. I pray that you would help us to learn more of you, that you would help us to read your word. Father, We pr I pray that you wouldn't uh, leave what I've seen in this book, in this book, um, that you would continue to work in me, that I would rest well not only on sabbatical but um going forward and that would give me a much better and more godly way of living life um in my restful work and uh in my restful rest in your mighty name Amen.